So uh, I really realized at that point that the, the technology now with Google Earth uh, is bringing mapping to the people in a way that blogging is bringing journalism to the people, or Wikipedia is, any one of us can contribute to the encyclopedia of knowledge that is Wikipedia. People haven't had that for maps. Maps have traditionally been made by someone on high and passed down. But now anyone can make a map. Anyone can tell their story. And uh, I think it's going to really change the world. It already is. Yeah, so uh, the particular project right now is with the Surui tribe in the southern Amazon. But what they're facing is uh, shared by many other tribes. They've had first contact now with the modern world. There's illegal logging and mining happening on their land. They're powerless to stop it. Um, the law isn't being enforced properly. They're trying to raise awareness of uh, their attempt to continue to live sustainably in the forest, um, and they haven't been successful at doing that. Their chief tried Google Earth. He's the first member of his tribe to go to university, and he flew to his home in Google Earth, and he saw what was at stake. He saw how their little patch of rainforest is surrounded by devastation. And he said, the world needs to see this. Because if the world can see this, and it, we have more than 400 million users of Google Earth all over the world. If they can see this, it's almost like a global community watch program. And he said, would you come teach us how to map things, too, how to do a blog, how to do YouTube videos of the logging trucks that are illegally cutting right now. And we'll catch it on film, and we'll put it on the spot. And millions of people around the world can see it, and it can't be denied anymore. So we thought that was a pretty sophisticated vision, but actually a really great idea, and very much in keeping with the mission of Google and with my project, Google Earth Outreach. So uh, we said yes. So we went down and we taught them. We were there for three weeks. And they picked it up, and I think, stand back. It's going to be a model for indigenous tribes around the world. It's changing the balance of power, really, because they they've had the knowledge. They have a lot of wisdom, um, but they haven't had a way to reach the outside world. They haven't had a way to connect with other people. And they see the internet as that way, that they finally can do that. Well, again, how they use it is up to them, right? We've empowered them with these tools, and they're going to probably do very surprising things. I know that Chief Almir has told us he doesn't want to use it to denounce the government. He wants to use it to um, show solutions and to, for example, be the eyes and ears uh, in the ground there to show what's happening so that they can um, inform the government what's going on. I mean, part of the problems with enforcement is nobody knows what's going on, so they can play that role. Um, they uh, would love to contribute their culture. I mean, I can imagine there will be um, educational, you know, uh, outreach kinds of things where the Surui kids will be pen pals with the kids in Brasilia and Sao Paulo and so on. Because it turns out a lot of the urban dwelling Brazilians really have a lot of um, misconceptions about the indigenous people. One of them, Chief Almir told me, was they think that we can't plan for our future. You know, we're good about our traditions, but we're not forward looking. And it's very important to him to show the world that they have this 50 year sustainable plan that involves a number of projects that will not harm the rainforest um, and that will bring income to his people and help the planet at the same time, such as replanting the forest and getting carbon offset credits. Uh, I think, in fact, they are the first tribe in the Amazon that is going through like an approval process for this carbon marketplace. And he wants to be a model, right? So once they have that figured out, how, how do you do that as a tribe, then they will use their blog, their website, you know, and so on to do outreach to other tribes in the Amazon and be a resource for other tribes. And for in Indonesia or the Congo, I mean, there's indigenous people all over the tropical rainforest belt of the world that are going through the same thing. So, um, yeah, he, and he also wants to use it to strengthen their culture because they've had contact now with the modern world for 40 years. 
the young people are drifting away. They're wearing Western clothes. One of them had a, you know, I forget what it was, a Sony, a PlayStation or whatever. Um, and what he's hoping is by the young people being taught how to do YouTube and photographs and so on, um, and putting that in Google Earth, they will come to see their own culture as really kind of cool. And they'll be interviewing the elders, getting the historical you know, information, the recording the dances and the ceremonies, um, seeing where they gather medicinal plants and how they use them. They'll be interviewing the elders and so on, and, and it will end up strengthening their culture. It'll be cool again to be Surui. All right. Well, the mission of this project that I first started, Google Earth Outreach, is to share with anybody around the world how to use Google Earth, Google Maps, all of our mapping tools to make the world a better place. Now we're expanding the mission because it turns out digital photographs and YouTube and blogging and so on, which we also have good tools for that are free and easy to use, are part of that package, particularly for an indigenous community that's going from zero to 60, right? They're going from the Stone Age to the Internet Age. And it's amazing to watch because I actually think we're going to have as much, if not more, to learn from them when they come online than, w than they have to learn from us. They've managed to live sustainably for thousands of years, for generation after generation in the rainforest. And in, what, one generation, we've just about wiped everything out. So I think when we can engage in a dialogue with them, a uh, global dialogue uh, with indigenous people all over the world, it's going to be good for everyone.